Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we are on to week six in our AA516 slash AE512 discussion. So let's take a look at the roadmap of where we're headed this week. So this is a lot of fun this week because we are finally getting to take all of the stuff we talked about through weeks one through five and finally start building our, well, well start and finish completing and building our non-linear six degree of freedom rigid body aircraft model. So this is going to be based on something that's called the research civil aircraft model or the RCAM model and what we're going to be doing in this very first video in uh, video here right flight mech 18 what we're doing here is looking at the equations of motion that remember we discussed these way back here in the lecture flight mech 11 in week four we talked about the flat earth equations of motion for this rigid body system um, and now we are going to now actually apply forces and moments and propulsion that make this specific to a particular aircraft, namely this research civil aircraft model or RCAM model. I think I'm just going to start referring to this as RCAM. It's going to be a lot easier for future discussions. So what we're doing in this video that's highlighted right here is just talking about what are the um, specializations and um, parameter modifications that we need to make in order to make the equations of motion up here represent a twin engine aircraft, uh, commercial transport aircraft down here. Okay, so this is sort of the overall kind of um, idea behind the model. What's in it, um, how the aero tables were developed, uh, what kind of features we might expect or behavior we might expect out of the model. So this is sort of the academic discussion of the model. And then what we're gonna do in the very next discussion here in Flight Mech 19 is we are gonna actually build that in um, MATLAB Simulink. So down here is actually implementing the equations of motion and building a actual flight simulator in a box in Simulink, right? So that's the game plan. So we're going to start with the overall discussion of the model from an academic kind of whiteboard perspective. And then we are going to kind of jump down and actually implement those equations and write the code to basically build a model. So at the end of the day here, when you're done, you will have a Simulink block which represents an aircraft. In fact, let me pull up the uh, <laughs> let me pull up this this slide that I was using as kind of a generic overall for this class. And this is the picture that we're actually talking about down here. I've been flashing this up for several weeks. This is the block we're building in Simulink. You're going to be able to input control surface deflections and some other parameters. And this is going to simulate this aircraft, which is this two uh, twin engine commercial. Um, aircraft. It's a publicly available model and we're just going to have it simulated and implemented in Simulink and then we're going to do fun things down the road like visualize the actual state of the aircraft um, and we're basically building a flight simulator, right? We talked about all the equations of motion and all of the fundamental mathematics um, and engineering topics in weeks one through five and now we are finally implementing and building it. Okay, so with that being said, let's take a look at the homework and see what are we going to do to make sure that we've got this model correct? That's in fact what we're doing here in problem number one. So in problem number one, what we would like to do is again, we are looking for a single M file. This is going to be a function. In fact, I would recommend you call it rcam underscore model dot M. This function, its entire job in life is it has inputs of the state in the control vector. And again, we define the state vector here. It's this nine element vector. And for this particular aircraft, it has five inputs. It's got an aileron, a horizontal stabilizer, a rudder, and then two throttles, one for each engine. So this model is going to take in the nine plus five, what is that, 14 inputs. So this function, you give it 14 numbers, and its only job in life is to calculate state derivative dot, right? It calculates um, x dot. You give it x and u, it calculates x dot, okay? That's it, that's all we need to do. Now, that being said, this is maybe a, a non-trivial exercise. We're gonna see, this is a couple hundred lines of code that you're probably gonna have to write to implement all of the aerodynamics, all the propulsion, all of the constants, all the moment, uh, all the uh, frame transfers and the rotation matrices, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the game plan with problem one is, um, <laughs> I don't know about you, but for me personally, I never ever write code properly the first time. Like I will write some code, I'll hit run, and, and something is screwed up. Something's not gonna work correctly. So I don't want people to write a couple hundred lines of code, hit run, realize it doesn't work or something's broken, 
now you've got a big troubleshooting problem because now you could have a bug anywhere in these couple hundred lines of code. So instead of doing the home run approach where we're gonna try to just swing for the fences and implement this model, cross our fingers and hope that it works, I'd like to do this in sort of a piecemeal fashion. So what I mean by that is we talked about this earlier, right? This function, it takes in the state vector, it's nine numbers, takes in the control vector, that's five numbers, and our goal is to spit out x dot. But bef in, in, on the way to getting the calculation for x dot, we're going to have to calculate a lot of intermediate variables. One of the first easy things that we're going to see that we can calculate is the coefficient of lift, the coefficient of drag, and the coefficient of side force. What I'd like you to do is just write enough code so that you're able to calculate CL, CD, and CY based on X and U. So that's not going to be several hundred lines of code. That's maybe 50 lines of code. And what I would like to do then is check. We're going to stop. We're going to pump the brakes right here. We're going to say, did I code it properly so I can correctly get CL, CD, and CY? So what I would like you to do in problem one, part A, is just code enough to get something maybe make a function called rcam underscore model underscore a this is a stepping stone right it's not the full rcam model but it's enough to get clcd and cy and what i'm going to do is i am going to provide for you on the class website a um data set here it's called xu data dot mat okay what this is is it is x and u for a uh, for a for a flight, all right. I performed a flight of my full model that I know seems to work quite well. I captured the traces of X and U during this flight, during this maneuver. And what I would like to do is I also saved off my versions of CL, CD, and CY. So if you have this XU data dot mat, that will give you all the inputs. I will also provide a check file for this step. So this homework six part one part A. This is the outputs CLCD and CY that I calculated from my model. All you're going to want to do now is run the same inputs that I did into your model and check do your outputs match my outputs, right? That's the game plan. So maybe just to quickly look over this, let me pull up MATLAB. Okay, so for example, here's my RCAM model underscore A function. You're going to write something very similar. So. I, I, it's probably no harm in just showing you what this is, but we're going to talk about all this in the video, right? You're going to do all of this code. You're going to do this code, blah, 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 blah. You're going to do all this code. You're going to get down here to CL, CD, and CY, right? That's all. It's only 115 lines, right? But we're not done, but we're going to stop right now. And I want to check, did I calculate CL, CD, and CY properly? So again, you see that this RCAM model A it takes in the complete state and control vector and it only spits out CLCDCY. Okay, so what I would like you to do at this point is this data file is on the class website. So just go ahead and load this up. You're going to see that it has traces of both X and U. So you can see that these are just um, data structures. So I think if you could say sim X dot signals dot values, yeah, look at that, right? This is a it's 743 by 9. So each column, column 1 is state 1, column 2 is state 2, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? There are nine states. So all you're going to do is feed these nine states in along with whatever is here in simu.signals.values, right? This is now, yeah, it's the same number of rows, but now it's five columns because there are five control inputs. So just feed all of these 743 numbers one at a time into your version of RCAM model A, and you're going to then be able to calculate 743 values of CL, 743 values of CD, 743 values of CY, right? And then just go ahead and compare that with my check case. So this one, in fact, I tell you, what, let me come over here, let me clear this, clear CLC. Let's go look at the check file. So again, this check file should be provided on the website. And if you look it up, here it is. Here's my 743 values of CL, my 743 values of CD, and 743 values of CY. Just plot the two on top of each other. Do whatever checks you want to verify and prove to yourself that your version of RCAM model A is doing very similar um, calculations and is getting the same outputs that mine did, right? So once we're done with that, that's done. That's part A. We have basically validated or unit tested our RCAM model A. So I can be confident that all of this code, all the way up down to the calculation of CL, CD, and CY, we can make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay. If we're okay with that, 
part B is just going a little bit further. So now keep building off RCAM model A and just start adding more lines of code. In fact, all you're going to be adding is enough lines of code so now you can calculate the moments due to aerodynamics about the center of gravity expressed in the body frame. Okay, so that's all you're going to do. And again, do the exact same st thing at this point is stop and compare against my version that I provide in this second file. So this file over here is now um, has information about this output vector, right? And just compare it. And again, if you get a thumbs up and you get a match, proceed on to part C, where you're gonna do a little bit more. You're gonna now add lines of code so you can now calculate the, um, the engine forces in the body frame, the engine moments in the body frame, and the gravity forces in the body frame. And check against the data that I provide in um, this part C mat file. And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Finally, you're gonna get all the way down to, this is basically the full RCAM model, right? Where you give it the state and control and it calculates the state vector dot, okay? And then again, check it against my version. So all we're doing in problem one is just going through one at a time, making sure that at the end of the day, we have this thing called RCAM underscore model dot M. It's a function that can properly calculate X dot if you know what X and U are. Okay, so that's all problem one is. It's the deliverable is this M file. Okay, this is not the full aircraft model yet, right? Because all this thing does is it calculates X dot if you're given X and U. So then in problem two, what we're gonna do is, okay, take the results from problem one, and I think if you watch the video, it'll be very clear how you do this, is take this M file, right, this function, and now instead of inputting X, U, and getting X dot, I'm going to have to wrap an integrator in here and I want a full aircraft model where I just give it the control vector, right? This is the ailerons, the throttles, the, the rudder, all that. You tell it how you're deflecting the control surfaces. Maybe you set some initial conditions as well. And this is going to simulate your actual aircraft, right? You will get the state vector coming out. So that's all this is doing. This is the overall goal. This is the actual deliverable, right? This is the uh, aircraft simulation model that we've been trying to work on all quarter is this thing. So this is going to be a simulink.slx or a .mdl file that represents your aircraft. And again, what I'm asking you to do in this, this problem is take that, that, that data that we were playing around with in problem one, and now just feed in the control inputs and see what the aircraft does. And I just would like you to maybe comment on what is the aircraft doing, right? Is it doing a, is it doing an axle roll? Is it landing? Is it doing a bank turn? You know, what's going on? Now at this point, you should have enough information where you can simulate this entire trajectory, right? You give it a series of control surface deflections, these traces as a function of time, and you can watch what the aircraft does. So that's all I'm asking for in problem two is simulate this system and, and comment on what it's doing, right? And then problem three is actually a very small um, variation on that theme. This is kind of another choose your own adventure where all I'd like you to do is basically you've got a full aircraft simulation and model now at the end of problem two. Well, let's start playing with this thing. Mess with the initial conditions. Maybe change some of these control inputs. You know, what happens if you hold the ailerons at zero the entire time and do other funny things with the throttle? Right, I'm not looking for any specific deliverable. I just want people to start getting familiar with this model and just play with it a little bit. See what happens if you perturb the initial conditions by just a little bit, what happens, right? And again, what I'm saying here is don't spend a ton of time on this right now because this is really just a rough kicking the tires on this system and just seeing how it behaves. We're gonna look at a lot more formal methods and analysis techniques that we can apply to this system to do some real engineering in uh, week seven and week eight. Okay, and then the last thing that I'd like to mention at this point in the class is remember, we've got a final project coming up uh, during week 10. And one of the things that we're gonna wanna be able to do, or, or you might want to be able to do, maybe that's a better way to put this, is the control inputs here, it might be fun if you could actually have a joystick, right? You, you can now fly the vehicle instead of, you know, reading in a data set and then playing it back through here. Maybe in real time, you want this U vector to be generated via a human interface device like a joystick. So 
Um, if that sounds fun to you, you might want to think about getting your hands on a joystick now because we probably only have a few more weeks before we are going to need to actually start playing with this. So given the state of shipping and uh, procurement, maybe if you think this sounds fun, maybe go on the internet, see if you can find. We know that these three types of joysticks, I've seen proof of feasibility of these working with um, MATLAB Simulink in the past. To be honest, I've seen a lot of other ones work as well, but I know for certain that these three do. So if you're interested in procuring or obtaining a joystick, here's three suggestions. Um, but if not, uh, you know, if you've got an Xbox controller lying around, let me know. I've seen people actually successfully get that to work and fly their simulator. But all problem four is it's really optional. It's just let's start thinking about the final project. And if you think it would be fun to use a joystick, here are three that you might want to think about putting on order right now so they show up in time for actually doing um, being of use to, in the final project. So... That's the game plan. I'm really excited for this week because we're finally building this aircraft model. I really want to make sure that we all have a model here that we are comfortable with. Um, and we all are confident that it's producing similar results because we're going to build on this. So this is one of these places where I don't want anyone to go off the rails or deviate right now because we are going to be building all sorts of things. We're going to be doing trim. We're going to be doing linearization. We're going to be doing a lot of other analysis based on this. And if you've got a little bit of an error or a little problem right now, this is just going to make your life more difficult than it needs to be in the coming weeks. So let's make sure that we're all comfortable with this model. And um, I think we're, we're setting ourselves up for success. So with that being said, I think this is probably a great spot to leave it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, shoot me an email. Otherwise, um, yeah, I'll look forward to talking with people during office hours. And uh, this will be, be fun. So I will catch everyone next week. Bye.